met a gypsy. Are you uh, are you excited for the upcoming e bike revolution? Like, have you have you uh, you got plans to get an e bike or an Alter or Stark or? Because I feel like yeah, that's I'm really going to open some shit up for you. I'm super down. That's that's going to be a controversial subject. Everyone's on the e bike, dude. People don't understand. I don't think e bike. I could be wrong. This is my opinion. I don't think it's going to take over motorsports. There's been e motorsports for years. There's yeah. Formula E. It's just a new avenue where you're able to go ride and maybe access some stuff that you weren't able to before. Everyone's like, yo, you can't hear the motor, this, that, and the other. Like, dude, I had an Ulta. That thing was so sick. I ended up getting mine taken away. I rode on some mountain bike trails and made them like a pretty legit video and a bunch of mountain bikers typed into <laughs> them complaining and they ended up snagging mine back. But I see Hill pushing the Stark oh, thing pretty really? hard. So like as soon as Stark hits the States, dude, I'm going to be the try to be the first dude to get on one of those, especially for the... Like I said, the the urban side of things, like going to street spots, people get triggered by noise. So if they don't hear you, yeah. when you're, even if you're hitting a jump that's 40 feet, 100 feet, and flying through the air, they don't hear you. They don't. They just they'll look past you and just keep walking. So I think uh, electric bikes are going to open up a huge avenue for people to ride out of their backyards, maybe even warehouses. There might even be like tracks inside warehouses or something in industrial areas because they're quiet. You know, there's no carbon going in the air. It's a, it's just a clean, just like they have electric go karts and stuff. Yeah, dude, I can't believe no one in like the Temecula area has started an indoor fifty place for like the E fifties that KTM do. Like, can you imagine doing like after school care where you'd basically like the parents come? It's like the soccer mums, but instead of taking their kid to soccer, they take their kid to the little e moto track. And there's like a full little stadium supercross sort of deal inside a inside a uh, a warehouse, man. That's so many places where you could do that in Temecula. It'd be huge, and there's lights. You know, it's a safe environment. You can any time of the day, like you said, after school, whatever the case. I mean, dude, you might be onto something. You might, you and I might go in on a warehouse and be the first dude to capitalize on this because that could be some shit right there. Yeah, it's I'm just down. something for the kids to do. And uh, like a warehouse, dude, it's cool. The lights are always on. It's always protected. It don't really rain out here, but, you know, it's a controlled environment. You could kick the AC on or whatever the case and something for the parents to kick their feet up, have some couches and chill out and not have to be at the track taking just mad dust all day and getting sunbaked. It's uh something brand new for them yeah and i mean you run like like i go to jiu-jitsu every day right so it's like i i got my class timetable and then it's like from four to from four to five there's like the nine to eleven kids class and then from five to six there's the 12 to 16 kids class and then there's all the adults classes it's like dude the, you need a moto class you have like some guy out there coaching medium boy is coaching these kids how to ride since he has flawless technique <laughs> and uh <laughs> so it's like i could just see that being such a legit business and imagine how many kids would be like i ain't going to fucking gymnastics like i'm going to moto yeah like take me to sure. moto class for sure it, it could be so big or like an out outside pe for a kid like in middle school or something just transitioning it gives them something to do because there's like out here in california we have surf pe at, at the coastal high schools and yeah, the middle schools yeah. and like i always tried to push heavy for like a moto pe when i went to public school and we we wrote up our little proposal the best we could i'm sure it wasn't that sweet at the time but it seemed cool <laughs> had the parents over oversee it but it ended up going through but yeah, we need more kids on dirt bikes. That's the biggest thing. The all these sports are so accessible. Ball sports, it's easy. It doesn't cost as much, but they're accessible. If moto is as accessible as it can be, it's only going to grow the sport just substantially and make it as big as it can. Because it's not even peak yet, dude. It 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 seems massive when you're a fan no. when you're in there and there's forty thousand people watching. It's cool as hell to see it's that big. But if you were to see TV ratings and see it compared to any given sports game. I mean, dude, we're not even scratching yet. So it's just there's so much more room for oh, growth. Oh, man. Dude, yeah, 100%. And, like, imagine if you got a place where kids can go uh, and they don't even have to own their own dirt bike. 
so like part of the deal is you just rock up all you have to do is bring your gear bag and there's just already there's just like a bunch of those ktm e-bikes so it's like just no barriers to entry because that's really the barrier to entry is like the cash you know like there'd be so many kids out there that'd be like you and me were man like we were kids that were watching supercross and watching dvds and especially think about the kids that watched like hayden deegan there'd be a massive massive percentage of of their following where the kids just like can't afford dirt bikes or their parents like they're kind of hayden deegan is almost like pop culture to a lot of kids you know sure. like where they support they support him and they're into him but they don't actively participate in the sport so i mean imagine if you just remove those barriers to entry and there's just like a little 50 moto park we're giving Dude, away free huge. game right now. Yeah, too. right. I know. We're <laughs> getting too many ideas here. But yeah, I get YouTube comments like that all the time. There's people like, this looks so cool. I would like to do this. But dude, I straight up can't afford a dirt bike. And it's insane now with the prices of everything, like inflation, everything. Like, dude, dirt bikes, that's a huge commitment. That's not something you just go pick up, to, you know, and have that kind of cash just laying around extra. Like, you're committed at that point, And it's, super hard for someone to if they're not in a financial position to grab a dirt bike if their parents can't help them or whatever the case they're not in the in the position so it, it'd be so cool just uh yeah that's crazy we're on they're on to some shit right now <laughs> yeah we should we should do it uh <laughs> does that feel cool on your end that you've like given bikes away to people that's the coolest thing ever that's the reason i do it i i strictly i take a chunk out we buy the bikes I, was, I still don't get any hookups on bikes, so we're doing a 250 giveaway on my next merch shop here. Brand new 2022 250. I put a Yoshimura full system on it. It's got graphics and everything. And I do it totally at random. And the first dude that ever won one was like, he had a lot of money and he already had bikes. And I was like, well, shit, you want it, whatever. But now I go at random and I go and look on the back of their social end. And like the last kid I hit, I gave away a Cowie 250. He had a 1996 YZ125, I believe, and him and his dad were trying to build it as a project, Dope. but they didn't have all the money and they couldn't get the parts. So, like, when we went and surprised him, because I called his dad, I'm like, yo, your kid bought a hoodie. I'm going to give him a dirt bike. And he was so ecstatic. I'm like, don't tell him. We'll just pull up and we'll pop the garage and that thing will be right there. And I just, I, I it's such a cool, cool feeling that I'm able to do that for someone because I, you know, I remember when I couldn't afford one for myself and now I'm able to buy it for other people because they've supported us. So it just, it's a cool feeling to be able to give back to them and, uh, hopefully cheat they're, they're, they're going to have fun on that thing and become better riders and hopefully it makes an impact on their life and they could pay it forward to the next person and so on and so forth. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.